Today we have English Walnut. This comes to us from my friend Rick Chapman. Rick and I met up locally, uh, I don't know, a few months ago, and he gave me several pieces of wood, one of which I've turned already, and this will be the second one, and I'm really looking forward to it. It does have a couple of problems, both of my making. Let's take a look at it. It does show evidence of a woodpecker getting at it. I didn't do that part. This was much thicker, like uh, about an inch and a half thicker, but the, I wanted to cut the pith out of it because cracks were radiating out from that pith. I put it on my bandsaw with my 3 8 inch blade, which is not a resaw blade, and I ended up with a, maybe you can see it, a twisted, twisted blade in the cut, and that resulted in this. That's a bandsaw cut that comes in there about down to here. And then on this end, I tried cutting it from the other end because I'm, you know, stupid. And it just got stuck halfway up. I finally made the decision to change the bandsaw blade and it went through there like butter. It just, it just was super simple. I put a 5 8 inch blade on there and, and it went right through it. So let that be a lesson to you. If you've been putting off changing your bandsaw blade, just do it. And on my particular bandsaw, it's actually quite simple to do. This will be the bottom. So so we have to cut away my bandsaw cuts so we're going to come up here another half inch or so put a tenon on there i'm going to find the center of the top here but i'll drill a hole for my woodworm screw we'll get this mounted up on the lathe and get to turning we're going to be turning at 650 rpm 5 8 inch bowl gouge i'm going to wear a glove because chips coming off of here at this angle hurt mask and face shield on Okay, we'll come down here to the bottom and start working. Okay, now we'll mark out for a tenon. Now I'm going to use this diamond point tool to square up the sides of the tenon. That's good. Turn the speed up about 900. Now I just want to do a little shear scraping, which is putting your gouge on the side and just using that bottom part of the cutter to scrape along here.
That works. Time for sanding. I'm going to start the sanding with my Sandoflex. This is 180 grit and that's as fine as I will go. I'm going to sand just the bark uh, along this top edge right here. Most of that will be cut away so I won't sand all of it but I'll sand up about an inch or so. And I like to do that because I'm going to put sanding sealer on here and then I'm going to put shellac on here and it's going to be all finished. And when I start working on the top, I don't want my, my new sanding sealer and my new shellac spilling over that edge. So I'm going to seal that up now after I sand so that I don't have to get close to that edge when I'm working on the top side. So that I don't mess up my beautiful bottom once it is a beautiful bottom. <laughs> no, not that bottom. This bottom. When that's done, I'll be using my 2 inch disc starting at 80 grit and working up through 400. I'll have the lathe spinning in reverse for that at 350 RPM. I'll show you what both of those look like as soon as I get my mask on. I'll be doing a little bit more of that, but what that does is cleans it up, smooths it out, makes it feel good, but it doesn't change how it looks. Then with the two inch disc, It looks like that'll be really easy, so I'll get that done quickly and I'll bring you back. We'll put some sanding sealer on there. See you in a bit. Well, I'm not sure if this is going to darken up or what, but it is. English walnut. Got some nice flecks in the grain there. And then, of course, that bark enhances that color. And this is sanding sealer that I'm applying, shellac-based sanding sealer. I'll put on two coats of this and then two coats of shellac. And it's pretty chilly out here, about 42 degrees. So I had the, had the piece spinning slowly on the lathe with my heater pointed at it to warm it up a little bit. And that really helps it absorb the sealer. So there you go. That's the first of two coats. And then I'll put on two coats of shellac and I'll bring you back here in just a little bit and we'll start, start working on the inside. See you in a bit. You can see I've put uh, sanding sealer and shellac around the top edge here. Most of this we're going to turn away. I'd kind of like to keep at least a little bit of the woodpecker holes. So I'm thinking these two here. I don't think we want to go this, this wide of a rim. That's pretty wide, but something where those are. About a 3 eighths rim, something like that. I've turned the piece around, obviously, with the tenon mounted up in the chuck. We're going to be turning at 750 RPM, 5 8 inch bowl gouge, mask and face shield on. Yep, just, just hitting it there. I could go a tiny bit farther than that. I do need to go just a little bit thinner on these two ends. This is thinner than they are, so I gotta start out here but then come back in before I get to here. Oh 
moist. I'm glad I checked. We're down to about three eighths of an inch, which is probably what we have here. Yeah. Yep. So we're about there. You know, maybe I might try my scraper before I completely get rid of the middle there. Okay, nice flat bottom. Time for sanding. I'm going to be sanding with my 2 inch disc starting at 80 grit. I'll work up through 400 and I'll show you what that looks like as soon as I get my mask on. Lay the spinning forward at 350. Then I'll do reverse as well. And I'll reverse my drill. And like I said, I'll do that through the grits up to 400. Then I'm going to go ahead and put the sanding sealer and finish on. I'll bring you back in here in a bit. And we'll take the tenon off. See you in a bit. I've got a block of wood mounted up in my chuck. I'm going to place a non-slip cloth over that and bring up the bowl. It's more of a dish, I guess, or maybe even a tray. Kind of shallow. I've still got my center hole there for reference, so I'll just drive my live center into that. And that will help center it on that block of wood. I'll bring up my tool rest. Spin the piece up, see if it's running true. It's right on the money. Apply a little pressure, turn the speed up to about 600 RPM. Going to use a 3 8 inch bowl gouge and commence the removing that tenon. Check for clearance. We have good clearance. I'll just keep working it away. Now that's pretty small. I'm going to turn the speed down to about 400 RPM and I'm going to change to a 3 8 inch swept back bowl gouge so that I can get in there closer. Now that's really small, so I'm going to turn the speed down to about 200 RPM. And I'm going to apply the bevel of the gouge against the bottom of the bowl. Right hand on the gouge, left hand on the switch. And when the little nub stops turning, we'll know we're through. Or it comes apart. Sometimes that happens. Now I'll just take this over here to the workbench, sand that up, sign it, get it finished, and I'll be right back. If you stick around to the end of the video, you can see the before and after shot to this piece. If you'd share the video, I'd really appreciate that. Thank you so much. Well, here it is. One live edge English walnut bowl in the books. This is a perfect example of a live edge bowl from a half log. It's just what you get. 
and this one is pretty nice I think there's the bottom all finished up It's got very subtle grain. It's not as dark as black walnut, of course. It's nice. It's just nice, and it feels so good. It's very, very smooth. Even the bark is very, very smooth. I didn't put a high gloss on it. It's just got a nice glow to it. It's just a, it's just a nice dish. Thank you, Rick Chapman, for sending this along for all to enjoy. If you like this video, thumbs up, please. I'd sure appreciate it. If you're a subscriber, thank you very kindly. I truly appreciate that. If you're not a subscriber, you might consider becoming one. I put out regular videos about one a week, and I'd like to keep in touch. An easy way to subscribe is just click my picture you see there near the end of the video. Your comments are always welcome, and I love reading them. So for now, this is Phil, Shady Acres Woodshop, signing off.